Hi, and welcome to another video of Java by Example. And today we're going to look a little bit into creating some objects for this document format, uh, where we have this invoice with the, a header, we have a bill to address, a ship to address, some shipping data, some notes, and some invoice rows. And uh, to start this up, I think we're going to create a document uh, package here. So we create a folder, document. And in that document folder, we're going to create a, a new file, invoice, Java. We have the Another file, we're gonna call that uh, header. Yeah, it could be a lot of in that header. Then we need an address. Yeah, we need some uh, invoice rows. Invoice row. Uh, call that. Uh, no, we will call that an. No, it's not an article. Yeah, it's an invoice row. Um, and lastly, we need. Let's see here. Have I forgotten anything? Build to ship to. Shipping data. Yeah. Shipping data. So, create this address class, header class, and invoice. we need some private members so in this case we're gonna have uh, two addresses and one ship two I'm going to do this simple simply by saying if there's a shipping address and no billing address or vice versa uh, then this boolean should be true uh, that we have in this document that we only have one address the so same as billing uh, so if we set only one of these then they are, the other address should be the same as the first one so we will have checks if if these are null. I know that you don't have to declare each variable as null, uh, but I find it more descriptive to do so. Um, and in here we also need a list of uh, invoice rows. And we can just call that rows. Initialize that too. We have some shipping data as well. So that's the invoice, I guess. And in the header, we have uh, some strings. We have the invoice date. That should be a, a, a real date, I think, and we could uh, uh, use that later on to uh, convert between different uh, time zones and so on, and uh, use a simple date formatter to uh, print and view this uh, date information. 
And we have a string for the invoice number. Usually when you use an invoice number or some kind of uh, specific numbering of a product or so forth, you usually use uh, alphanumeric characters. So it's good to have that as a string. If you will use only numbers, then you could simply use an int here and so on. Um, but I think a string should be good for our example. And then we have the invoice row. Here we have the product number, uh, product description. Uh, then we have an in, uh, we could have a float quantity. And last but not least, we have a big decimal. Price. And the reason why I use big decimal is that big decimal and big um, big decimal, and there's another one if it's big integer. Uh, uh, those big decimal classes is uh, used for working with really large numbers and with precision as well. So they are actually working with strings in uh, behind the scenes. And what you get by using these clauses is that in, in the case of a price, even if you uh, convert the price back and forth and do different calculations with the price, you will not get any rounding errors. With a float that is binary represented. So a float can't be uh, as precise as a big decimal because some of the values will be missing when you go further down in 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 the calculation so we, if you have a, a really fine-grained uh, price calculation where you really want a value to be correct uh, let's say that you uh, create one value as a sum of all the prices for the different products and then you have a VAT uh, tax on that and then you have the total sum and if you do calculation back and forth you could have some small differences in in the actual prices when you subtract and add and, uh, or multiply the values back and forth so uh, using big decimals for for um, currencies is a really good uh, way to go about it. So uh, lastly, we have the shipping date, and I don't remember what kind of data was in here. Oh, that was was a lot. Oh, I forgot the notes in in the invoice as well. We need to have a place to save those as well. Private string notes. And then we go back to the shipping data. So here we need a, a string ship number. Private string sales rep. date as we said before and we have this ship via the distributor and we have some terms and due date should also be dates so shipping data and then we are, have the address left so we should do that too we don't want to 
take one address here and I think we we will skip the separation of name don't really see any reason why we should have a separate uh, class for name but if you have a lot of name um, name specific functionality that you want to add to this example then it could be good to break the name out into a separate function where you could have a parse function to separate out the title first name and last name uh, and and do the different uh, corrections in how you present the name depending on regions and so on for instance in china you have the last name before the first name and in sweden you have the other way around and sometimes you want the title to be represented last in in the in the name and sometimes you want it to be first so it could be good to have some a class to handle all these cases but i think we will just choose one way to represent the name and then stick with that so i don't really see that we need that so we have a title first name it's a lot of strings here so we can just last address one address two address three city state zip code country so there we have the address with all the fields that we need there and i think it should be good to have everything as a string so we can manipulate it as we want it later and now I think we are ready to do some actual reading of a file. Um, so um, we can go back to our app function here. And then we're going to start using one of uh, the packages where we imported last time. So if we look in our POM file, we have here... Uh, this Google co code JSON simple uh, artifact JSON simple. So that was what we're gonna try to use today. We can do a Google search for that. Didn't start Firefox earlier, so it might take a while. Let's see here. And then we do this on simple. Um, so here we have this toolkit. They should have some simple examples. Everything you can read here. Um, so we click this take uh, um, escaping examples okay that wasn't really something that gave us anything really good hmm If I remember correctly, you should use a JSON object to parse uh, parse the date. No, you have a JSON parser. Okay, so that's how you uh, read the file then. Or is it a JSON value that you use? That's what I remember. Um, let's see here. A some simple API. It's usually good to look at uh, Java, uh, Java doc to see uh, what uh, classes you have and how you should use the different elements. So we have these JSON 
um, value that where you can put a reader in. So we could have a file reader, which uh, is a IO exam IO uh, class in Java to read from. But there is also a JSON parser that could take a reader and return an object. Um, so it's not thread safe and the JSON value is. So I guess that JSON parser is a bit faster, but JSON value is thread safe. So that's more, is a, a more safe way to read uh, your values if you use a lot of um, runners to read multiple files, I guess. Uh, I don't really see why a JSON parser shouldn't be thread safe, but yeah, if they say so, then it probably is, is that way. So if we read a JSON value, we will get back a JSON object. And um, often uh, a JSON document is uh, some, some JSON objects and some JSON ar arrays. That's uh, the only parts you could have in, in a JSON object in a JSON document and the different values in a JSON object could be just fetched as a simple hash map. So just check if a value is there and then you get it and you get the string value back. So uh, then you have to do your own parsing on the different elements in, in the array. So let's see here we have um, yes. So let's go back to our document then. Uh, let's see here. Um, there we have it. In this document, we have an invoice object. We have an invoice header object, bill to object, ship to object, shipping date object. And we ha also have a name object inside of the ship to and bill to. And we have a notes uh, value. And then we have an array of invoice rows with a number of objects inside of that. So to read this document, we need to uh, look in our app and here we uh, append JSON simple. As you see here, the JSON simple package. Um, what's that doing? We get all those classes in. And then we use a JSON value to parse and we just create a new file reader and the file reader could take a file name if I don't. We can be safe and say that we want to have a file and the file should be... Uh, let's see here we can take the single JSON. fun and uh, that should return a JSON object and we can call that uh, doc and because this JSON value only returns an object because JSON in turn or JSON value in turn when it parses the document it doesn't know if the value it will create will be either a JSON object or a JSON value. So that will return only an object and then you have to cast it into what it is. You could uh, do instance of checks uh, to see that your, um, your document is correct. 
but if uh, this casting is incorrect, then it will throw an exception. Let's see here, we can do some some indenting here, so we it's a little bit more readable. And uh, it will cast an exception, so that then we have to catch an exception. always good when you're just debugging things to print the stack trace so you see where the error actually occurred um, in your code and then we can put our virtual our, our uh, terminal over here and we can go into uh, invoice directory and build our package and this might take a while so it will build the snapshot for us and perhaps we'll get some compilation errors uh, we can uh, put it over here and it might be more readable fail to execute goal Build failure. Um, at line three, we it will have once a class interface or an enum expected. Uh, see here. Ah, uh, of course, that was a simple mistake. Build this again. Let's see here. Uh, okay, array list isn't present, and that's because we haven't imported Java IO classes. And uh, the file reader and the file should be in Java IO as well. So probably will be mostly. Oh, array list is in YouTube. When you use an ID, mostly uh, most of these things could be uh, uh, found out by just uh, checking uh, or tell, telling the the ID to look up and organize your imports. So we use uh, array list over here as well. So we should import it in here. And all of these should be in the package document. So it should be in org, example, invoice, and document. So we don't, um, we have all these classes. Packages, the package, package in the correct package, um, and then we need to add that package into our application as well with an import because we want to use all those classes later. It's not important at the moment, but later it will be. So let's see here. Uh, still an error, invoice row, uh, can't be found in invoice, invoice row, can't be found in invoice, why not? This public class should be visible from invoice. They should be in the same package. Uh, 
Mm, cannot find symbol. Big decimal can't be found. Ship data. Invoice row. Address date. Okay, it can be that we can't compile the other other ones because they don't have the different packages in them. So this should require Java util for date. And this should require nothing. This should require util big decimal. And here we need date as well. So let's see if we are closer to truth. Um, class interface on uh, enum expected. Ah, right package again. Import, of course. Uh, so many simple mistake. So there we have those. Yeah, big decimal is not in Java util. So let's look up big decimal then. Could be in math perhaps. Yeah. So let's see here. Math. We are slowly but surely getting to building this package. An invoice row is public should be declared in a file called invoice row Java. Okay. So all these should be capitalized. And we change this. Every file should be the same. And the test run ran. So now if we run, run the target invoice um, or example invoice app, we get an error. Because JSON simple object was not found. Didn't I import JSON simple? Yes, uh, org JSON simple. Org JSON simple. So JSON object should be in there. Import them one after the other. There we go. Try this. Package them again. Yes, of course. We need to have uh, uh, let's see if we can. We need to add another build step to our application, so we will get all the different dependencies in in the same class path. Um, so we can run. So we see here Maven assemble jar with dependencies. See here jar with 
dependencies. Use this mm, dependency set. You are with dependencies. Example and uh, ensemble plugin. See here. So here we have a plugin, uh, the plugin infrastructure in. inside of Maven is quite extensive, so you can get a lot of things for free. You just add a plugin and it will do something for you. Um, so here we have some single goal with in the package phrase, and that will create this example. But I also want to, uh, in the archive, say which is my main class. So I think we have to do some sort of uh, put some of these together. So we can start by adding a build plugins to our, um, our POM file. So before the dependencies, we want to add some build rules. And then we need the plugins. So there we have this plugin to make an assembly during the package phrase. But we also want it to be configured with a main class. Let's see if we can add this to this configuration. So archive manifest our main class should be org example in voice app. So now I think we have hopefully added what we want in the package um, to build this invoice snapshot. And then it will fetch this plugin and all the different parts that is, it, that is required to make this build and put this together and build a snapshot with your dependencies. So it will consolidate all the things that is required to run the different parts in my application and put those inside of this YAR file and also add which, uh, which class in the YAR file should be the default runner class. So then I should, if everything goes well, be able to say Java JAR, run this JAR. Uh, and because it has a target main class in it, it should just run. And it did. So in this class, I actually hopefully ran this um, app class and I parsed the document. We could simply take this document and say, I want to get the value notes and we can do a system out of the notes and we should, should get something to show up in the console. Let's see here, if we succeed. Yes, hope you like this appetizer. So, we have come pretty far today. Uh, at least we have started to build this document structure with an address, a header, an invoice, an invoice road, and a shipping data. And all of these have 
the different dependencies in them. We have the invoice that has addresses, two of them, some shipping data, some notes, and uh, an array of, uh, or a list of invoice rows. The invoice rows has some product information, shipping data has some uh, ship related uh, data and also some terms of payment and uh, we have a header that we're gonna display later and an, an address that we're gonna use for both billing and shipping address and in our applications we have imported or we have uh, read or passed the JSON document and fetched the notes and printed those out uh, <clears throat> So uh, to look uh, more into what we did in, in this POM file to de describe the different parts here, we, we copied some code for this plugin the, where we said that we wanted the artifact with the name Maven assembly plugin, and we wanted the version 2.6 of that plugin. This plugin is something that is inside of the Maven uh, plugin infrastructure, but you could use your own artifact. So you could build your own plugin using uh, their plugin uh, API to uh, hook into a different parts of the build process and get a lot of data and different uh, different uh, parts of the compilation process uh, input values to do different things. Um, and then we said that we want a descriptor uh, to say that the jar file that we're built with dependencies should also have this jar with dependencies after it. So you could see which of the jars built has all the dependencies. And then we said that the manifest file inside of the jar file should have this org example invoice app class as its main class. Um, this will enable that we could only we could run the jar file and it will e execute the main app class. So we don't have to put it into class path and then uh, execute the, the app class manually. And then we have the execution information that is just which phase of the build process it should hook into and what goal it has. Um, and this should rerun in the package uh, phase and uh, should have a single goal. Um, so you could say uh, MDN package call on single if you want to do this single build but if you don't do that it will package all the different packages and the single one will be replaced with this uh, build plugin <clears throat> that assembles uh, the different parts so that that's uh, roughly how this plugin infrastructure works and you have a lot of interesting plugins uh, some of those i really like are this assembly for assembling and also the release plugin which will uh, create releases for you handle all the versioning information and create uh, tags in your git repository and a lot of different steps that you usually have to do manually to uh, keep track of the, your releases, it will do for you. So that's a really nice plugin as well. But I think that that uh, this should be enough for, for this episode. I hope you like this content and uh, if you want more uh, of these con uh, these videos, please subscribe, follow me on Twitter. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.